function, we are only told, um, just explaining words. And remember, um, the transformations have to be in order of operations. So first, that's the base function, and then the first transformation will be Yes, so I will have to graph f of x minus 2, which is a horizontal shift of right 2. Very good. Step number 2, 1 half f of x minus 2, which is vertical shrinking by a factor of 1 half. Then the third transformation is negative 1 half f of x minus 2 reflect with respect to, very good, the x-axis. And finally, step 4 is on step 3. So negative 1 half f of x minus 2 and plus 2. This will do what to this? Up to. Good, very good. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so now I would like to come back to this and I would like you to choose from the handout anything you want. Okay, so uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, but not 11 because we have not discussed this yet. So 8, 9, 10, or 12, which one would you... Oh, uh, actually not uh, 12 because we didn't get to that either. So these two should not be here because <laughs> they are they are not part of 2.6. It's an error. Okay. Which one? Okay, 9 and 10. Very good. So um, in problem 9 on page, oh, I'm sorry, this is no page in the handout. Uh, we have f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. We have g of x, which is x minus 5. And we have h of x, which is x cubed. They're asking us to find f come g come h. <coughs> Very good. Of course, of x. Can anyone give us the definition of this? F of g of of x. Okay, one, two, three. I have to start from the inside. Don't erase it like that. I'm just making a point. What do I put inside? Good. So now I look at g. G says whatever minus 5. So I have F of, because now I have to work on this. F, careful. G says whatever minus 5. So minus 5. Now I look at F. F says whatever squared. Then minus 3 times whatever, and then plus 1. So please tell me what to write. Because the whatever now is x cubed minus 5. x cubed minus 5, x cubed minus 5. Good. So now we know how to square this. How many terms do I write? Please don't say 2. Good. So don't say 2, don't say 4. <laughs> I didn't say you said that. but Okay, so I'm ready. First term squared. minus 2 times 5 times x cubed plus the second term very good now here it's easier so I have to write x to the sixth now I have two terms that are like terms 13 x cubed and now this and this and this so 41 
Do you all agree with this? So that was f come g come h of x. Good. Now um, you said also number 10, right? In number 10, we are asked to decompose it. So this is going backwards in a way. Uh, so problem 10, we are given f of x, which is 1 over x squared plus 1. And they want us to decompose this function into f, g, h of x. So we will be going backwards because what is the first of these three functions? Which one would be the first function I apply to x? Right. So please give me an h. They want us three functions now. Perfect. So now I get a number. Which function I apply next? <coughs> g will be the second function. Can anyone give us g? x plus 1. Because they want us 3. If we go ahead to that, then we're not going to be able to find the third function. So, so once I'm done with this, I get a number. And then I create x plus 1, which is this. So then will be this will be the last function. What will be f of x? 1 over x. So to x, I apply x squared. I get a number. To this number, I apply x plus 1. Then I get a number. To this number, I apply 1 over x. OK. Um, I can do 11 and 12. We haven't talked about any of those two functions. We haven't talked about sine of x, and we haven't talked about e to the x. We will in chapter 4. But we can make one up. So let's say f of x equals the cube root of x plus 1 to the second power. And let's say we want three functions again. Can anyone give us the innermost function that you will evaluate first for sure. I agree. What will be the next function once you are done with x plus 1? You have one number. What will you do to that number? x squared indeed. When you're done with that, you're done with all this. Yes, so f of x will be the cube root of x. Very good. Now from the review, I would like to make a list. All the answers are in the back, and we will do whatever we can today. So on page 323, so this test is on Wednesday, only on chapter 2. <coughs> so what I would like you to uh, be clear about is problem 6. So all page 323, and they will continue. Um, then problem nine, and then seventeen, then twenty-two, twenty-six, twenty-eight. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, Sixty. Sixty-three. Seventy-one. Seventy-five that we just did in class today. No, no, we didn't do seventy-five, I'm sorry. We did seventy-eight. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. 
notice that I'm only picking one from a set of problems, but you should do all of them. 87. Ninety four, one hundred, one oh three. These are all representative of what we've covered in class and in, in, uh, from chapter two. And I will definitely do problems one through thirty four and check the answer from the test, chapter test, chapter two test. I would definitely do these, and they are on page 327, 328. So now please tell me what, um, and let me also tell you in words what you should expect. Uh, you should expect to be able to determine from a graph its domain, range, um, increasing, decreasing intervals, uh, x and y intercepts, um, max, min, um, that's pretty much it from a graph. Uh, you should be able to find the sum the difference product ratio in their common domain and just the function composition, not domain. Um, average rate of change of a function. Um, graphing a piecewise defined function, which is crucial. Uh, the difference quotient for a function, which is crucial. Uh, finding um, the graph, of the equation of a line passing through a point and perpendicular or parallel to a line. Transformations. Uh, the midpoint and the distance formula. Identifying the equation of a circle. Um, finding the inverse of a function that is one to one. <coughs> Graphing uh, the inverse function and the function on the same coordinate system. I can't think of anything else. I don't think there is anything else that we that I didn't mention and we discussed in class. Now I'm ready. What would you like to work on? Circle? Okay, we already did one, but let's do another. Um, let's say uh, 105. <laughs> on page 326 and that is x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. So what do we do? Please do not forget to add to both sides. So now this and this and this are accounted for. X, but it's since this is minus, okay, minus 2, okay, okay, that's fine. Yes, plus 1 for the Y, I completely agree. So I have 2, and I have to add 1 to both sides, and now these are accounted for, 1, 2, 3, plus, don't forget the plus, Y plus 1 indeed squared equals, and now what is not accounted for yet are these, the 1, the 4, and the 4 that needs to be moved. So it's 9. So then the center, so obviously because I, ha I was able to put it in the equation of a circle, I know now that this is a circle and I can identify the center and the radius. Very good. 2, negative 1 and the center and the radius is 3. And if we're asked to graph it, I have to plot 2, comma, negative 1 first. I go 3 up, 3 to the right, 3 to the left, 3 to the south. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So these are the points that I should hit. Of course, it's not going to be a perfect graph. So that's the center, and the radius is 3 everywhere. OK. Uh, what about finding the inverse function and graphing two functions on the same coordinate system? <coughs> Will that work? Yes. Okay. So, um, I would like to work on problem 15. 
on page 327. I don't know what they are asking, but I just want to pick that function. So f of x equals x squared minus 1, and x is greater than or equal to 0. And the question will ask us to find f inverse, domain of f and f inverse, and graph them together. So one more time. Find f inverse, find domain of f, and domain of f inverse, and the range, of course. And then graph them together. Okay, what did we say would be the first step when we solve something like this? When we're <laughs> Bless you. So what will I do first? <laughs> domain and range. Very good. What is the domain? Yes, on the side, on scratch paper, exactly what you just said, Michelle, I will do this. I know that this is x squared, and x squared minus 1 is this. I, there is, right? We know that from transformations. Now we don't even have to think, because we learn transformations. Good. So, but the domain obviously removes this. Why does it remove that? Because it's not 1 to 1, right? So the function uh, by the horizontal line test will not be one to one, but this one, that's why they truncated, we say, or minimize the domain, is zero to infinity. Now this function is one to one. So what will be the domain? I like to write it like this, f defined on taking values in, because then you will remember what to do with the f inverse, I hope. Right, this given right here. And what would be the range? And you can look at it, but you know transformations, you know what the range is. Very good. I don't know the function that is the inverse function. I don't know nothing about it at this point, but I can group. It's my phone. It's all right. And it will ring for an hour till I get to it. Maybe I get to it. I lied. I can't get to this. I don't know where it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so what is the domain of the inverse function? And the range of the inverse function? <laughs> That's it. Okay, that I know for sure. Now I'm going to graph. I'm going to graph what I know already, right? So 0, negative 1. And where is this point? Right, 1, 0. So this is the graph of f. What will I graph next? Very good, excellent. Thank you so much, Frank. I still don't know the function, but I can graph it. Who will help me graph this inverse function? So this point was 0, negative 1. This point is 1, comma 0. This point doesn't go anywhere. So you're going to do negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. 0, 1. Oh. One more time. I know nothing about the function. Uh, I know, I know, I don't know the function, but I know its domain and range, and I know its graph. So what did I answer so far? I have answered the domain of f, the domain of g, uh, the domain of f, the domain of f inverse, the range of <laughs> f, and the range of f inverse. I graph them together. That's done. The last thing I have is to find f inverse. Okay, so what will be the first step? If you remember, it's a four-step procedure for finding f inverse. Very good, that's the first step. So I will write y equals x squared minus 1. Good. Step 2. Very good. x equals y squared minus 1. Step 3. Excellent x plus 1 equals y squared, and in order to get y by itself, what should I do to both sides? But remember, when I take the square root, 
I have plus or minus, which is the square root of x plus 1. Which one? I don't have two functions here. So there is no way I can get two functions. They will not be one to one. So if a function is one to one, it has an inverse. The inverse is also one to one because it has the inverse, the original function. So which one? And before you answer, remember the domain of the inverse <laughs> function is clearly x plus one has to be greater than zero, which means x greater than negative one. And the answer must be, in this case, a positive number. Therefore, I know which one to pick. Which one will I pick? So in step four, f inverse is the square root of x plus 1, which we knew. Is this the square root of x plus 1? Because this is the square root of x and move to the left one. So this is indeed the square root of x plus 1. Good. Uh, what about... Um, Difference quotient. What about uh, average rate of change? What about graphing a piecewise defined function? Are we okay with those? Right. Uh, so let's say problem 26 on page 324. Twenty-six. We have f of x, two x for x less than 0, negative x for x greater than or equal to 0. When I'm asked to graph a function, what is the first thing I have to determine, without which I can't even start domain? Very good. So here I know that this can be replaced by negative infinity 0. Would you agree? And here, this one can be replaced by bracket to infinity. Now I can state the domain. Can anyone give us the domain of this function? Is that clear? Yes. Excellent. Good. What value must be in the chart no matter what? Zero. Now I copy these symbols. Again, if you use my method, you don't have to. If you have your own, I'm fine. So I copy these symbols underneath. Parenthesis to the left and a bracket to the right and they touch. Then I do this, which I know it's an overkill, but who knows where I'm going to look and what I'm going to write. Who knows? So what am I, which function am I using? Which piece? It's to be correct. Yes. Which piece am I using here? Good. Both functions are, because this is very important to remember, because one of them is quadratic, then I need more points. But if they are both linear, then I need two on this side and two on this side. Maybe more if, I, if there is a special point that I want to use. So on this side, I'm going to say negative 1, and that should be enough. Please plug it in and tell me. Good. When you plug in 0, what do you get? When you plug in 0 on this side, good. And let's say positive 1, what do you get? Good. So that's all I needed, two on, the, on each side. So now I'm ready to graph. Which is the first ordered pair I will plot? Let's start from left to right. Yes, yes. So negative 1, negative 2 is this point. Then the next point is? Yes, it should be an open point. And I'm done with the left-hand side, and no one can extend it to the right. However, it turns out that I start at the same point. So I have to fill it in. So I'm filling it in. And the next will be 1 comma negative 1. And if we're asked to find the range of this function, what will you say? Very good. Uh, difference quotient, average rate of change, more transformations, max min, <coughs> increasing, decreasing. Can we do max min? Yes. Uh, problem 17. Yes. 
on page 324. Okay, here's the graph of a function. It starts at negative 3 and goes to 5. So it's something like this. And we have tons of questions here. Uh, find the domain, find the range, x and y intersects, um, intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, the missing function values indicated, da 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 da. And I'm going to add, find the max min. Local mass or relative max? Local max. Local min. Which x values have a local minimum? here and here. Bear with me, the graph is, has a minimum here at 3. So local max at, I'm sorry, at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. How much is the minimum? Then I have to read the y values. And I read negative 3. For this one, y equals negative 3. And for this one, I read negative 5. I'm sorry? We're talking about minimum. The minimum is negative 5 when x is 3. And the minimum is negative 3 when x is negative 2. Is that OK? OK, now I want to find local max. Local max exists at x equals, it's right here, at x equals 0. How much? Yes, when y is negative 2. Yes, please. Yes, one, one, sec one second. Any questions on this? Charles, go ahead if you have something. No, I just want to read about it was asking for like the, the main the range there. Oh no no. Uh, well Ashley said that she only wanted to see max min. Uh, so I didn't uh, answer okay. all the other questions. I just picked the function that well, you will have everything about it. Gotcha. Including yeah. max min. Yes. So that would be number twenty-four. That would be number Use the graphing set 17 uh, and find the max min. Yeah. Um, this, I copied the graph from 17. So, and problem 20. Did you need anything else? Domain range here or? Sure. Sure. What is the domain of this function? So, domain negative 3, comma 5. What about the range? Negative 5, 0. Very good. Oops, I'm sorry. This is a bracket. That is a parenthesis. OK, what else? Um, x intercepts. Are there x intercepts? In an ordered pair format. Very good. Is there any other x intercept? No, very good. Y intercept. <laughs> um, intervals of which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So f is increasing on negative to zero union. Very good, excellent. The function is decreasing on. Very good. Yes. Careful. There is a gap here. <coughs> zero to three. So the function is decreasing between zero and three. 
increasing between 3 and 5, uh, increasing between negative 2 and 0, and decreasing between negative 3 and negative 2. So then what do I write? 0, 3. Um, missing function values, okay? So they're asking <coughs> us to find f of negative 2 and f of 3. f of negative 2 and f of 3. How much is f of negative 2? Yeah. How much is f of 3? Good. Um, difference quotient. Yes or no? Okay, so we have a function in 28. So many of the problems that I uh, selected for you to look at, um, we already did in class. So. so we have negative 2x squared plus x plus 10. So remember the difference quotient will be given to you. You don't have to memorize the difference quotient. So let's find that. I'm looking for more paper. I hope I didn't run out. No, I didn't. So what is the piece that I already have? I have this piece and I have this piece, sort of. But the piece I don't have and I need to work on is f of x plus h. Good. What is this? Notice that I did not put this in parentheses because it was plus 1 in front. If it were negative 2, I would have. So now I need to simplify this. And we have a contract on x plus h squared. So negative 2 outside and in parentheses, what do I write? Yes? Very good, excellent. So negative 2x squared, negative 4xh, negative 2h squared plus x plus h plus 10. No one can simplify this. But now I have the third piece of the difference quotient. And that's all I needed to simplify, to get it and simplify it later. So now, instead of this, I copy what? All this, would you all agree? Okay, so negative 2x squared, negative 4xh minus 2h squared plus x plus h plus 10. Now I reach the minus that needs to be distributed to these terms. I would like to distribute it and write it after I distribute it. <coughs> Do you all agree with plus 2x squared minus x minus 10? Yes. Now remember the target. The target is this goes away. And all terms that do not have age in the numerator have to go away. Okay, so let's try. Anything that goes away? How many terms are left at the top? How many terms will I have to write in parentheses after I factor out h so I can get rid of h? Please write 1 and 1. Negative 4x plus 1. Remember, three terms, you have to have three terms in parentheses. So then the final simplified form is negative 4x, negative 2h plus 1. Um, okay, uh, let's look at the distance. Give me two points to find the distance and the midpoint. Any two points you want. I can copy them. I'm sorry? Good. So I'm asked to find the distance. I will write the formula. 
x2 minus x1, everything squared, plus y2 minus y1, everything squared. And I will... I'm sorry? Are you going to give it to us? Um, no, because this is a circle. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals d squared. Same thing. So I will write underneath. This is my x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is my negative 3, this is my negative 1, this is my negative 4, and this is my negative 2. So d equals negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 squared. You cannot give me any negative number when you square. 4 plus negative 4 minus negative 2. It's negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2, <coughs> negative 2 squared, 4. So this is the square root of 8, which you can simplify by writing the square root of exactly. <coughs> now, let's also add the uh, midpoint here. It's the average of x's, comma, the average of y's. So if you, when you add negative 1 to negative 3, you get negative 4, divide that by 2. When you add negative 2 to negative 4, you get negative 6 divided by 2. So the midpoint, the coordinates of the midpoint are those. Uh, common domain, please. 75 on the same page, 326. We are given f of x, which is the square root of x minus 1, plus the square root of x plus 5. We're asked to find the domain of this function. The domain of this function can be determined by finding the domain of each piece and then finding the common domain where they overlap. If they don't overlap, the function doesn't exist. So what is the condition that I have to write for the first function? For this function, solve it to determine the domain of that piece. So I have to write this, and then indeed x is greater than or equal to 1. So this piece has domain 1 to infinity. Now for this piece, what do I have to write and solve? So the domain of this piece is negative 5 to infinity. Take a moment, graph them. There is no rush. I will graph 1 to infinity, which is this. I will graph negative 5 to infinity, which is this. Notice I don't care for units. This is just helping me to find a common domain. So what is the common domain or the domain of f? I need where I see both colors. Why? Because both have to exist at the same time. If I choose a negative 10, none of them exist. If I use a negative 3, one of them will not. But if I choose anywhere between 1 and infinity, both functions exist and I can create function f. Very good. Anything else? Are we prepared for this test on Wednesday? Will we, will we be prepared for this test on Wednesday? Please redo all quiz problems. You have them. Uh, you have your quizzes except the last one. Uh, please do all problems we did in class. I know it's a lot, but this is the only way. And please do the problems that I indicated and we did not get to solve today. Uh, if you'd like to start your test early, you can on Wednesday. So, um, what, how should